Greetings and welcome to this screencast on using CTDL documentation. My name is Stuart Sutton and I'll be your guide uh, through this exploration of uh, both the schema for CTDL and how it is currently uh, being documented uh, and some plans of how we're uh, continuing to augment that documentation. So the goal here today is to is to go through the documentation itself at a sufficient la level that you can navigate the documentation, you can find things and know where to look up uh, 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 the, the canonical versions of things so you know how to apply uh, the CTDL to, in your context. So we will be looking at a number of things. I want to spend a few minutes here on the agenda and defining a few terms. So we're going to be looking at how to navigate and search the various components of the documentation. Uh, we have declaration, formal declarations of the, the schemas in both human and machine readable form. We want to look at those and we want to look at support documentation like the guide, uh, which provides some narrative help in figuring out um, what those various components are and how they are applicable. I'll be using some terminology and I'm going to pause here for a bit and talk about that terminology uh, because it will come up as we as we go through this little tour. Um, properties and classes in the CTDL, the um, Credential Transparency Description Language, and in a companion vocabulary that we'll be using called the Achievement Standards Network, the, there are properties and classes that are defined. Um, RDF properties and classes, um, uh, RDF standing for Resource Description Framework uh, from the W3C, the World Wide Web Consortium, um, which is a vocabulary for describing uh, 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 data on the web in such a manner that it's linkable and so forth. So we have the CTDL and then we have the, uh, the Achievement Standards Network and they have, are comprised of properties and classes. Uh, in the, uh, the CTDL, you will see that there are, there are many, many, many properties and classes that are considered stable. In other words, they've been thoroughly reviewed and discussed and, and we are very, very confident um, in, in that they can be used uh, with, without much probability that they will uh, need further tinkering. We do have some properties and classes though that are we have marked as unstable and they're clearly marked as unstable, which means they're still incubating a little bit they might change a little bit that that if you're looking at at developing um, uh, an implementation and you want to go straight to what you know to the uh, to and using what's safe then you would use stable and you would use unstable only recognizing that there's a little bit of risk there that they might be changed definitionally um, um, and possibly even deleted through further investigation. So all of the properties and classes have, are, are, are given um, uh, this sta the status of either being stable or unstable. And you want to look at what is stable. Second there, we'll use the terms current and versus pending. Um, the vocabularies are, un are, are sort of living things. Uh, as I just noted, the CTDL is still in the process of being uh, fully implemented. Um, so, uh, but but we've now released. So we have a we have a current release of the vocabulary. It is comprised of some stable and some unstable terms. And then we also though have another snapshot of the vocabulary called pending. So we'll be looking today at what is current. In other words, what is is easily found on the website and what you should be using. But if you're interested in the development and trying to follow the development, then you want to look at the pending view, which shows not only everything that's in the current, but also things that are being uh, brought into uh, 
the, 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 the schema in anticipation of the next release of a current version. So pending and current are things you want to become familiar with. Uh, one other thing to be to note is normative versus informative. Uh, in standard speak, um, normative aspects of a specification are those that are prescriptive, that one has to acknowledge as being so uh, in order to be in conformant with their use. So, so, um, uh, and then there are informative aspects of a spec, which are there uh, to provide background, further, uh, further your understanding and so forth of the normative aspects. Um, but informative aspects are not prescriptive. So there's the normative and the informative. And when we hit some of the tables, I'll talk a little bit about which parts of those tables defining properties and defining classes are normative and which parts are merely informative. We use the term deprecated and you'll see in the current view that there are a few properties that have been deprecated. Deprecation for us means that we no longer recommend the, a property or a class to be used. They don't disappear. It's not in, it's not um, um, uh, a bad thing if you, if you have in fact used a property that is in, or a class that has now been declared depre as deprecated. Um, the, it's not going to disappear. Your systems don't break. It's just that we don't recommend their continued use. And in many cases, deprecated terms have a succeeding term, uh, a, a property or a class that's sort of taking their place. And that is all noted in the definitional tables. Um, and then finally, serializations, machine encodings, we'll look at that. We'll look at those right at the end of, of the talk today. So the schemas that we're concerned with and that, um, uh, that, that comprise CTDL and, and are, uh, or comprise our context are of two sorts. There are, there are those things in the world that we are describing using the credential transparency description language, the CTDL, such as competencies and learning opportunities and assessments. And then there are competencies, which is the second major category. And for it, as I noted earlier, we're using the credential engine achievement, uh, credential engines achievement standards network profile for describing competency frameworks. The ASN, the Achievement Standards Network, is a long-standing framework, again, in RDF, useful for linked data on the open web. The ASN, the Achievement Standards Network, has been around now for nearly 20 years and is widely deployed in the description of competencies and company frameworks of all sorts, learning in, uh, learning out, learning goals, learning outcomes, um, uh, uh, competencies, benchmarks, um, skills, knowledge, and so forth. All of them are encompassed in what we call um, the, the CEASN or the Credential Engine ASN Profile. So that's sort of the landscape and some of the definitions. Um, and from there, I think, I think we'll take a start, taking a view, taking a look. Okay, so it all starts on the technical planning page. And if you go to the technical planning page, which I'm hoping many of you have already, uh, you'll see up in the upper left, there is a, a drop down menu. And this menu, um, everything that we're going to be talking about is accessible from this menu. So if you ever get lost, just come back to this menu and you can um, reweave your way through, navigate yourself back into the into the documentation. So you'll note that there is at the top, there's this the CTDL guide. The guide is new. It is incomplete. It is still in process. We're still flushing it out. Uh, it is a, a it, it's it's a lookup. It's a it's a place where you can go look things up, uh, but it's also written in narrative form, so it explains things. So the CTDL guide is the place where our explanations are so far. 
So if you want to get a beginning grasp of the CTDL, that's the place to go. Uh, again, it's still under development. You'll see in its index when we go look at it that um, several things uh, near the bottom are still to be done. Uh, we are also discovering since publishing uh, the guide of places where we need to add, a, add additional descriptions um, uh, of, of uh, term and class of term use. And those will, will come along as we go. But if there was, if I had to say well, there was one place where I need, where I thought people should go, it should be, it would be to the CTTL guide. The guide contains, as I will show you, links to the other parts of the of the of the documentation. So it it it, it links out to the schema terms. It links out to uh, 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 to the ASM and to other pieces other pieces that are that are used. So the guide is a good place to begin. The focus today will will be primarily around these two areas the CTDL guide that I just talked about, the schema terms, which are the place where the normative definitions for all of the properties and classes in the CTDL for describing credentials and the supporting resources can be found. So, so schema terms there, it's very, very, very important. The second batch further down the CTDL profile of the ASNDL, ASN description language, uh, are for, for describing competencies. So we'll also take um, a, a brief look at, at, at those as well. Again, the goal today is not to explain um, what, uh, what every class means or every, pr every property means, but to give you uh, enough confidence that you can get around in the documentation and, and begin to figure things out from the documentation on your own. So at this point, um, I'm going to jump out of this PowerPoint and go out onto the web and actually go, we'll actually go take a look at, at some documentation. Okay, uh, I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to go to schema terms. Um, this is that normative page that I was talking about. This is the place where all of the classes, all of the properties, all of the control vocabularies and their component concepts are, are defined. So it is a, a, a long page and it is, it is simply comprised of a set of alphabetically listed tables of classes alpha listed tables of properties, alphabetical listed tables of concept schemes and of concepts. So it's a very long page. So you'll be doing a lot of bouncing around in this. So I might, I think I'll first, before we go into it, show you, talk a little bit about what you see down here at the bottom of the page. Uh, this show stable, show unstable. If you are wanting to just take a peek at, 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 at the properties that are currently marked as unstable, you can click unstable and what you will get, you should get, yeah, are the, um, are the properties and classes that currently have the status of unstable. So here we have the classes that have a status of unstable, the properties that have a status of unstable, we have a couple of control vocabularies uh, uh, of, that have uh, a status of unstable and though the concepts that belong to those vocabularies that are unstable. So you can look at the ones that are stable and then of course this one does exactly what it says, which is to show you all of the, um, uh, uh, the schemes, let me, let me reset that, all of the schemes that, that are stable and that's the majority of, of, of properties, and classes of terms that are stable. You're also able down here to jump to any of these groups. So I could jump to classes. I can then jump, jump. I could then jump down to concept schemes and so forth. It also has a search function that is, that is actually fairly powerful. 
For example, if I'm wanting to find out about how ASN deals with assessments, how does it deal with assessments? I can type in assess and what this will do, oops, let me need to reset. It, it pulls up all of the properties and classes, concept schemes and concepts that touch on assessment. I could do the same thing with something like name. And well, let's see, name. You need to get used to clicking the reset and see all of the properties that have name in them. So there's family name, uh, given name, uh, target node name, and so forth. And to get, find out what any of these are, you, you, you simply click them to open them up and you'll get a definition of what they are. So let's, um, I'm going to jump back to the top. One of the things that I think you might find very useful here at the top is to take a look at, at useful groups. If you click on useful groups, you get this set of tables at the bottom. And what you're able to do is look for the kinds of, for here, for example, the kinds of agents. What kind of agents sub and subclasses of agents are used in the CTDL? Well, there's agent, but then we have credentialing organization, credential person, currently unstable, and quality assurance credential organization. So agents within the CTDL fall into these three classes, these three subclasses of this of this superclass agent. Credentialing organizations, those that 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 grant credentials, teach about credentials, quality assurance organizations that um, that assure the quality. So if I want to know these, this useful group agents and their subclasses, credentials and their subclasses. Credential is a superclass in, in CTDL with a whole raft of, of subclasses. So an apprenticeship certificate is a, sub, is a subclass of credential, associate degree, bachelor's degree, badge, certificate, and so forth. So this is the list of, of the types of credential that CTDL covers. So credential and its subclasses, very useful. Roles within jurisdiction. Jurisdiction it defines the geopolitical context of, of, of a resource, um, a place where it's applicable, places where it is not applicable, and so forth. So these roles, so a, 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 a credential is accredited in some jurisdiction, approved in some jurisdiction, offered in some jurisdiction, regulated in some jurisdiction. So these are the roles uh, received within jurisdiction. Roles agents play. Now remember, agents is both credentialing organizations, credential, currently credential person and quality assurance organizations. So if we look at the roles they play, those agents accredit, approve, offer, own, recognize, regulate, renew, revoke. Um, those roles agents play. Roles received by agents, in other words, a credential is accredited by what received means here. It's, you have to kind of wrap your head around it. Uh, it, means, it basically says, what points to agent? So we may have a, a, a credential that is accredited by an agent, approved by an agent, copyright holder is an agent, offered by, owned by, recognized, and so forth. So this little group at the bottom, um, uh, and it's right up there uh, in, the, in the list here at the top, um, it's very useful in the beginning, so you get a sense of one. What do we mean when we say uh, a credential? What what's what is within it? What is not? Um, and if you don't find something there, it means it has not been defined as being in. So useful groups, there I think are 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 very useful. Now I'm going to go back to the top, and um, and and walk you through. Uh, 
uh, the properties classes. I won't say anything today about about utilities, concept schemes and concepts, so that you get a sense of how to navigate this page, because this page is is very very long because the credential transparency description language is like a big dictionary of things you can say about the uh, entities of concern in the credentialing environment. So so it's big. It, it, it is a big page, big, big, big page. So And it gets even bigger when you consider that underneath each of these drop downs, there is a full definition of what of uh, a full definition of the thing of the resource, the thing you're looking at. So again, if we if we go back to the top, um, let's take a look at at some of the, at I would like to look at a class. I'd like to look at a property, and uh, talk about the tables. Talk about what is being described in um, uh, in by what is meant by the rows in those tables. Sorry. So classes. If we go to classes, let's just take let's just take the first one here. Uh, well, no, let's 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 look at one that might be a little more. Um, uh, so let's let's look at at um, uh, competency. So a, a competency. This is that super class. That super class of competency has a label called competency, and then it has a definition. This definition in these tables, the definition is the um, uh, is the norm, the most normative part of the table. In other words, the definition defines context and meaning of of competency. In other words, what we mean when we say competency here in the CTDL. This is its definition. So it's it's how we use it. We're not making a claim that it is the definition of competency throughout the world. It is how it's being used in in the CTDL. And it has this definition has precedence over the label. Uh, the labels can be misleading sometimes, or they, or or they may be used in a way that is not familiar to us. In other words, we would we would never use the term that way. The important thing is to recognize that it this is what controls, and it's what is meant within the context of the CTDL. So definition and label are very important. Definition being the key to this table about the definition of competency uh, and we same thing thing would be true true with contact point here's a definition of the of contact point a thing that is a contact point um, definition is again normative here we have a a comment on contact point and that comment is informative it's merely trying to tell you a little more about the definition, but the key here is, is definite in terms of the definition is the um, uh, in, in terms of the this class is the definition. Um, this tells us that what we're looking at is a class and not a property. Here, it is stable. So this property has been declared as stable. Um, it has certain properties, so a contact point has a contact option property, a contact type, an email um, uh, address, has a fax number. So all of these properties in this property row can be used with contact point to describe a contact point. Um, and there are other pieces here, but it, uh, that uh, that I will not not deal with that that uh, you can kind of figure out on your own. They're not really that uh, that uh, rough. Uh, we have this part of it of the the schema part or the history part going forward. Should there be any changes to contact point, any changes, we change some wording. Uh, we may not change the meaning, but we change some wording. This history 
will lead you back. We'll show you in the in, as we go forward in time. We'll show you every change that has been made to to this to this class contact point. And then here at the bottom are our serializations. And just so you have a sense of what that is, I'm going to click on. Uh, here. So here it's a piece of machine encoding of. And here you can see contact point. So uh, so the machine encodings are 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 useful for those. For the tech folks who want to take a look at what that looks looks like, it's also there in in JSON, uh, which does not look that good. Uh, if I if I view source, well, it's not worth taking the time. I could format that better. So so serializations are there. In other words, how this should look in JSON code and so forth. So that's that's a, a a competency and the structure of the competency. So you have the U, the competencies URI. All terms, concepts, classes are identified by URI there is, so that they can be um, resolved over the web and their definitions brought back. So they all have a URI. They all have a label, a definition, and they're either, they're either a, a, a class or, um, or a property, although you'll see that we also have um, uh, concept scheme classes as well for the down. Um, they have a status uh, and the and the and uh, they have uh, uh, this in range uh, in range of which means um, the the property object points to competency. So there's a lot packed in, packed into the, packed into these tables. So anyway, that's a concept. Let's go. Let's jump back up, or let's jump to properties, and let's take a look at a property. Um, properties are somewhat are similar in in terms of their table. Um, uh, let's look at at uh, the property affiliation. So in here we have the property affiliation label of affiliation and its prescriptive definition of what we mean in the CTDL by, by affiliation. Uh, it's a property as opposed to a class. It is currently unstable, which means if you're looking at using it in a production system, you kind of use it at your peril. You really want to, um, uh, uh, and we're moving as many of these unstable to stable as quickly as we can. But we use them with caution, use them with caution. Um, the affiliation property, this domain includes basically means you, the affiliation property can be used on credential person. In other words, a credential person can have an affiliation. So it's a property of credential person and it has a range of credential organization. So you could think of this in terms of credential person A, affiliation, credential organization B. So a credential person has an affiliation with a credentialing organization. So domain means can be read here as being uh, the thing to which this affiliation is useful in describing. Affiliation is useful in describing a credential person. And the thing that it points to is the credential organization that the credential person is affiliated with. So that's how to read these two um, uh, uh, these two properties. And uh, uh, and of course, they're uh, again have their serializations, which which we will look at. So those are the two two major uh, groups. Uh, if I go back up, classes. And here's a full at the when you click on any of these links, you go to a table of contents of an alphabetical listing of all of the classes. So this is all of the classes in the CTDL. And if I look at the properties, I go to all of the properties that can be found in the CTDL. Things such as uh, fame numbers and regions and given name given name and family name, address country, address locality, locality. So again, it's an alpha list, each each one taking you to the definitional table that we just that we just looked at.
So that's classes and properties. Next, let's take a peek at concept schemes. Uh, concept schemes is the terminology from a, a, a W3C World Wide Web Consortium specification called SCOS, Simple Knowledge Organization System, which is a, um, um, a, a schema for describing things like taxonomies, thesauri, uh, simple uh, uh, enumerations of, of, con of concepts of things. Uh, so it's, it's used for what the, the library world would call control vocabularies. And so there are concept schemes followed by concepts, which are the individual concepts that exist within these schemes. So let's take a look at a few uh, at a few of them so that you get a sense of, uh, of of how the tables work, how to get around the tables. So let's let's look at um, agent sector. So agent sector it's defined as enumeration of the types of sociological, economic, or political subdivisions of society. Sectors include public, private, for-profit, for-profit, business industry, and so forth. And here, notice our concepts. These are linking to the concepts in the other table of contents below the concept scheme. So there's concept schemes in the, in the index, and then there are concepts. So this is a concept scheme, agent sector, and it has these three concepts private for profit, private for nonprofit, public. So if I go to any of those, I will see that here's public for pri uh, uh, private for profit, the sector that contains privately owned organizations that operate for profit. And it is in scheme agent sector. In other words, it says I belong to the agent sector scheme. And again, the serializations. But we can go down a few others of these. Uh, uh, let me jump back. Let me jump back. Oops, excuse me. Jump back to concept schemes. Uh, let's look at a few more. Agent service type. What type? Agent service type. The type of service offered by an organization. So there is an agent service type concept scheme or control vocabulary, and it has the following concepts. The credit service, approve service, offer service, recognize service, regulate service, renew, revoke. Same structure. And, and, and if I go to any of these, it will do the same thing. It says, here's a credit service. The resource being described provides accreditation service. And it says, I am in the agent service, uh, the agent service uh, type control vocabulary. Um, assessment method, same notion, and the assessment methods is by artifact, by exam, or by performance. Assessment use, formative or summative use. Um, audience, the type of audience for which the resource being described is applicable or available, citizen, current military, and so forth. So I think you kind of get the, the idea of how these work and what uh, and what these individual terms are actually doing are linking you to the definitions of those tables. So here below the concept schemes is a full listing of all of the concepts that are, as some of us would say, under control that have been defined. Um, uh, performance, performance, a demonstration or performance that is usually assessed while the performance is taking place or as recorded for assessment purposes after the performance. So all of them have definitions and, and the definition, again, that definition is, 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 is in a sense custom. It's what by custom, it is what that Prop, what that concept of performance means within the context of the CTDL, even though others may define performance slightly differently. In order for this to, to have meaning within the CTDL, this is the uh, normative, the controlling aspect, the controlling definition. 
So, so that basically covers, uh, um, if we go back to the top, that basically covers the, the, the structure of, of the CTDL primary tables, where the terms, and by terms we mean classes and properties, are defined. Um, key takeaways, again, uh, always as you're looking at, at, a, at, at a definition, uh, make sure, you know, take a look at, make sure you're looking at the, at the, at the status to see whether it's stable or unstable if you're thinking of deploying it in a system. Um, and again, as quickly as we can, we are moving um, uh, things from stable to, un, uh, from, from unstable to stable. Uh, okay, now let's go back. Uh, let's go back to the top and so I'm going to leave the uh, the CTDL description language at this point, and I'm going to go down here to the uh, to look at the uh, the credential engines profile of the achievement standards network description language that is used for describing competency frameworks within the context of CTDL, and there are two pieces. There's a profile of the ASMDL, which will look a lot like the page we just looked at. It's sort of, it is an alpha list of classes and properties that are used to describe competency frameworks. And then there is a brief CTDL profile of how to, or how the ASN, which we're adopting and profiling, um, how it works. Uh, it is, I have to say, not adequate at this point. This is one place, the, the competency frameworks, where in our documentation, when we go over to the guide, uh, we will be doing further, um, uh, further development. But before we go to the guide, I thought we would take a look at these two, just so you have a sense of what the pages are for. So let's look at the, uh, uh, the CTDL profile of the ASMDL which I said looks a lot like the page we're just looking at. So let's go over there. Any moment now. Okay. So there's you know, documentation, metadata about the document at the top. So this is the CTDL profile of the ASN description language. So there is a, a description of, of, uh, of, the, of the CTDL's use of the ASN schema. Then it's followed by, by a list of class declarations. There are really only two of concern, of key concern. One is a standards document and the other is a statement. A standards document for us is a competency framework. And a statement is a competency, uh, a, a set of which make up a, 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 a competency framework. So you could think standards document statement are the equivalent of competency framework and competency. And then below property declaration tables uh, that define all of the uh, uh, of the properties and classes in the uh, uh, the ASN. So you'll get, for example, um, uh, uh, let's let's see, has child. So again, defined by here's the source definition. The source being described is higher in some arbitrary. So this is a uh, where you have a, a set of competencies, and one competency is a child, and another competencies. So has child is child. That was a way of building hierarchy within within a competency framework. But the tables are basically function exactly the same as we were looking at uh, before, as we were looking at with the CTDL tables. So there, there are, are uh, as, as you'll see when, when you look, when you, uh, when you go through, excuse me, let me get back down to the, whoops, where, oh, to the table of contents. When you look at 
the, these properties, the properties that are available through the ASM for describing um, uh, uh, competencies and competency frameworks, you'll see that it's fairly rich. Not only are there ways to, to provide concept terms, skills embodied in a, in a, in, uh, uh, in, in a competency, the education level of the competency, what's its target. You'll also find properties for mapping one um, uh, concept to another concept in a totally different concept scheme. So you could take a competency uh, in uh, developed by one organization and map it to a similar or broader or narrower concept in another vocabulary. So there's mapping mechanisms for mapping back and forth from exact match um, uh, to and things of all, all of, of that sort. Um, uh, subjects can be aligned. Uh, uh, prerequisite requirement alignments can be determined where one one concept in the scheme is prerequisite to another. Rights, uh, statement labels, statement notation. So it's a very rich vocabulary for describing competencies and competency frameworks. Structurally, this document, although it has a slightly different uh, 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 style sheet applied to it, is basically the same thing. It's doing the same property by property, class by class, set of tables with their source definitions and so forth. So that's, let me get back to the top here, that's um, so that's the CTDL profile for ASNDL. And then the other, the second piece at the moment is the CTDL profile for ASNDL, which is the how-to. And it basically is a narrative that talks about how uh, 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 the ASN describes and builds a portrait of a competency framework. And here it's playing with uh, playing with uh, uh, DQP and competencies from DQP, and it talks about how cross-jurisdictional, how how you can map from Brandman University a concept scheme there to to the DQP and so forth, and about granularity of competencies and how competencies can be further decomposed. So this is a very valuable document to, to, to take a look at in relationship to the competency frameworks. It also talks about its mapping properties. So these are the mapping properties of, of one competency, of a competence, of competency to competency mappings. Uh, most of these intended for uh, cross framework mapping, where you've got where you've got a concept that has been assigned broad alignment. How do the two concepts relate? So this is very valuable. Again, this whole section, the stuff on um, uh, on competency frameworks will be, uh, its documentation will be growing significantly over the um, next month or so. So that basically, what we looked at so far have been the documentations around um, uh, the schemas, the schema for CTDL the definitions of terms and classes, defining those normative meanings of the terms and classes. So we saw those here with the schema and we saw them here uh, with, with the, with the, with the uh, uh, ASN, with the competency framework stuff. With the competency, the how-to for, for ASN D2L, we saw a little bit of narrative. I mean, this documents on the page is an attempt to explain. The schema pages don't explain, they just define. They just, so the schema terms and the CTDL profile just define. Now, now let's go look at the CTDL um, uh, uh, implementers guide. If we go over to the guide, you'll see that this is, while still has strong uh, uh, lookup documentation characteristics is actually narrative. And what it does is it, um, uh, it takes, for example, a notion. Here we have a, here we have cost 
you know, a cost profile. In other words, how to model costs within a degree. And it talks about it in, in, in narrative terms, gives an example. And here we're looking at an example. And so the convention throughout the, the, this guide is to give a little narrative of what's being expressed what is being expressed and then provide a graph which it taught which the document also talks to about how to kind of interpret the graph but a graph that expresses what was stated in narrative terms in other words what does this graph say in terms of the cost of this bachelor's degree so this is a bachelor's degree has an estimated cost um, has a residency type uh, uh, has an audience type, like it's full-time, full-time students. This is, this is a cost type, it's tuition. So this is a tuition cost for in-state students uh, uh, enrolled full-time. This is how to express it. And the convention throughout is, is for there to be the graphic that nicely ex expands in size, the graphic and an encoding of that graphic in, in two different um, linked data mechanisms. This is an RDF, uh, a, 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 an encoding scheme, a serialization mechanism called TURTLE, developed by the World Wide Web Consortium. So this is the same data in, from the image expressed in, in TURTLE, and here is the same data, this, this uh, 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 image expressed as JSON-LD. So this, this document is the place, I think, where people need to come. And notice here, in development, so there's still stuff being developed, to come to get a grasp of it, maybe even initially before heading off to the tables. Notice that below each of these graphs. So we have the graph, we have the serialization, and then we have the, 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 prop, the classes and the properties that are used in this graph. So there are two classes, two things here. There's a, a condition profile describing uh, uh, condition, uh, describing a condition, and these are conditions around a learning opportunity. So there's a learning opportunity. And then all of these properties are here. And these link you back to, their ta to the tables in the, the, the document that we spent uh, uh, so much time looking at. So you're able to go from here into the, uh, 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 into the, into the uh, uh, specification tables. The reason I say start here is this gives a context that is totally lacking over in the pure specification, the tables, which are just alpha listed, alpha listings of things. So you'll find, I think, the guide to be very, very useful. The guide is structured in the following way. It starts out with the primary, what I call the primary classes, so credentials and agents like credentialing organizations and quality assurance organizations starts out with those it then uh, talks about the a thing called the the um, uh, the condition profile which is used to describe requirements and recommendations and so forth um, a assessment profile for describing assessments learning opportunity profile for describing learning opportunities and task profile is unstable under review, and career pathways have yet to be uh, to have yet to mature. Following the primary classes are these support classes, and these turn out to be to be uh, uh, useful and worth spending a little time around. Cost profile: what are the cost factors for a credential? Duration profile: what are the time constraints? earnings profile, aggregate data on earnings. Some of these, by the way, will most likely be the result of data coming from third-party sources, but earnings. 
So what's the what is the profile for earnings? Uh, we're not, there's no personally identifiable information in either the earnings or the employment outcomes profiles. These are simply, you know, summative data, um, uh, aggregate data of, um, of, of uh, the earnings profile of a given credential or the employment outcomes profile of a credential. Jurisdictions, what jurisdiction, are there applicable jurisdictions where, where this credential has authority or are, and are there places where um, where it does not. Uh, so it's a mechanism for describing jurisdictional constraints, process profile, um, mechanisms for describing uh, uh, development, maintenance, uh, processes that have to do with the life cycle of, of, of these resources, the life cycle of a credential or the life cycle of a, of, of, a, of a competency framework. What are the processes? What are the processes by which they're reviewed and so forth? Revocation profile describes, uh, makes it possible to describe um, how a credential is, what are the, what, what are the processes and, and procedures in place for revocation and verification. So these support classes are all related to the primary classes. So you have a credential, and that credential has has can have costs, duration, earnings, and so forth. Um, uh, then we have this fourth area, which I call the utility classes, which are resources that are used throughout in, in, in various ways. Um, the credential alignment object, I will leave for you to read about. It's really important because it is the place uh, where um, uh, uh, the alignment object, this blue object here, is the mechanism by which all control vocabularies and things are, are uh, that are related to a given, a given, here we have a learning opportunity and we have a, a um, uh, alignment object that's describing um, a, it is describing a node in the DQP. Um, uh, so it's, it's used pervasively. You'll want to really take a look at the alignment object. And the others are geo-coordinates. How do you describe, um, uh, you know, uh, longitude, latitude, latitude, so forth of a, of, of a region or where your, where you as an organization are located and so forth, different identifiers. Within the control vocabulary, we have a lot of identifiers that play key roles in, in um, the competency framework, or dealing with everything um, uh, from government identifiers uh, to, uh, uh, well, anyway, lots of identifiers. We also have a, a thing called identifier where you can describe um, identifiers that aren't already in the vocabulary. Uh, that uh, that are applicable to your credentials or whatever. So there's a way to to describe identifiers. Uh, postal address. It's you know it basically uh, self-explanatory. Uh, various places where a postal address is necessary or a con or a contact point. So these utility classes are things for that get used in various places throughout this throughout the schema. And then finally, agent actions. Uh, that uh, are which are a way of recording that a that like a, a quality assurance organization has made has taken an action on something they have accredited something those actions can actually be described uh, within uh, the context of the CTDL and then there are pieces down here uh, that you see that that have uh, with TBD that have have yet to be got yet to be done. So I, I hope you find this one uh, the 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 guide really helpful, um, and I hope you're also willing to speak up where it is not so helpful, or where it's confusing, and we'll we will work to uh, uh, to make it clearer. So those are the major documentation points. I do want to go back to, um, and why, I guess I have to go to the top of this. Let me go back. There's one last thing we want to look at, um, in, and that are serializations. 
And um, if you're, unless you're, if you're not a technical person, um, uh, uh, you'll probably not be too interested in this stuff. But it's there again. Uh, it was right here, schema serializations, and it is a place where you can come see machine encodings of these schemas and control vocabularies and so forth. So, for example, here's the CTDL schema. And let's say I want to look at the encoding and I want to look at it in JSON. So here is the, a JSON LD representation of the entire CTDL. So notice my little scroll bar here is going very, 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 very slight. It's very big. It's very big. I can also, though, look at it in a format um, a preferred format from the World Wide Web Consortium, which is the same data in the language Turtle. So I can look at the schema, and I can see I can see that uh, I, I, can, I can see the 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 full encoding. Uh, let's see if I got that right. The the encoding of the of the CTDL schema in 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 JSON LD. These are all of the control vocabularies. So for example. I can, can uh, look at the encoding in JSON for the cost type vocabulary. So here is the cost type vocabulary in JSON LD. So it, uh, if you're not one of the tech, if you're not a technical person, you don't have to you don't have to worry about this page. Uh, um, it isn't critical to your understanding, but it is key to um, uh, for tech folks. It also has the uh, uh, the uh, JSON LD context uh, and so forth for uh, and you can directly link to these. If you're doing leaked data, you can also download these schemas uh, to your desktop. So that basically kind of wraps up what I wanted to say. Um, I'm sure I left out pieces, and that we will, you will, um, may have questions. Feel free to uh, to ask those questions um, on 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 the available um, uh, Google forums. Here is a key documentation URLs list. Now, uh, this is a list of those of those links. But bear in mind, again, you don't have to remember this. Just go to the Credential Engine um, uh, technical website, and all of it is available to you in the uh, in the drop down uh, uh, in the drop down menu in the upper upper left. So thank you very much for coming along for this tour. I hope you found it useful, and um, talk to you later. So bye bye.